Hey there, you great people. So you know me by now. And if you don't, then subscribe if you're a first time viewer. I've done a couple of these uh, Vice News videos, which I absolutely love reacting to. Um, and hopefully don't get copyrighted because I've done two of these Vice News videos. So this will be the third one. So if I get slammed with um, a copyright strike on each of them soon, then my channel is going to disappear, but hopefully not. It's not happened up to now, although it happened on my last channel with a certain person. I won't mention the channel's name. Well, months and months down the line, uh, suddenly got copyright strikes. I hope not. I just want to have a variety channel and bring things to you that you can enjoy watching, hopefully. Uh, this video I'm reacting to from Vice News is called Eating in Alaska's Hidden One Building Town. Let's check this out. You know me, I love my food videos. I like everything about America. I know this is Alaska, but yeah. So America, Alaska, quiet. wherever. Like the end of the earth. Well, it is, literally. Hell. If you had to ride a train to get there, you would that, go through two tunnels. I bet that's warm in winter. Not. <laughs> it's like going through the Wizard of Oz when it goes from black and white to colored. Sorry, before I uh, get going properly, I'm so sorry again to stop. I'm enjoying a whiskey and coke here, but at the time recording this, it is like 1.47 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday now. So when you great people get to see this, it'll probably be Tuesday evening, late Tuesday evening. Most of you in America, of course, so you're like six hours or more behind. And Connie, I barely checked my emails, but I did check um, yesterday, was it? I think last night. Um, I seen your email, which is absolutely wonderful. I've been over it a couple of times. So I'm going to try my best later on today for me, which is Wednesday now for me, to reply to that, yeah? And I'll give you my answer on uh, what the question you asked, the big question you asked about a certain person. I've got my opinions. Thank you. It was just beautiful, like you were in a different world. Mountain water. For a lot of people, this Glacier. trip to Alaska is a trip of a lifetime. Glacial water. And they've been getting hammered at these little tourist rip-off places. Can I get the fish and chips, please? Our focus from the beginning to the end was serving the best quality fish and chips in the state Word of Alaska. Word of mouth is important. We did that. Even for my YouTube channel, Word of Mouth is important. Just tell all your friends and family about my YouTube channel. Get me more subscribers, please. So I'm coming to America in like four months. My name is Margaret Farlamas and my husband and I own the Swiftwater Seafood Cafe in Whittier, Alaska from 1997 to May that of 2018. Nice. We did our best to hand make everything that we offered. The uh, paprika on the fish and obviously some batter. Drop it. When it After starts floating, you know it's done. years being a sheet metal worker, I started getting a little wore out and we talked about so we just kept our nose in the uh, classified section of business opportunities and a little seafood cafe in Whittier popped up. I said, oh, Whittier? Okay. So we decided to go take a look at it. <laughs> wow, look at that. A little waterfall come down the mountainside there. Straight from the mountain, it straight into the lake. It was slow and <laughs> it was pristine. But Whittier, Whittier. It's two teeth, so it must be wittier, right? We went down there, we looked at it, we interviewed every person that we could find in town and every business owner. What do you think? What's the opportunities and so forth? And we literally took out a sheet of yellow lined paper and wrote out a contractual agreement, gave the guy a check for $5,000 <laughs> and bought it, got on the train and said, what in the heck did we just do? We're in... $5,000? I might have to come over to Alaska um, and buy myself a restaurant because I think I'm a pretty decent cook. I've been hoping recently, I'm sorry to disappoint you, like the time you're here in England, like it's actually been quite mild, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 15 Celsius. So it's not been uh, like terrible. I watched the uh, different videos here because I keep doing uh, Goodness in People, which is wonderful and everything, and Cold Blue Cam, but I don't want it to be the same every single day. But although it's been mild and warm here, um, Except a few weeks back, but it's minus five for about two weeks. But recently, for the last few weeks, it's been mild. But since it's gone mild, the weather's just been bad in terms of raining all the time. So I've not been able to get on the motorbike whatsoever. It's just terrible, you know. The rivers are almost on the road at the minute. It's gone up about a foot in the last few weeks. Um, so yeah, hopefully, like bringing you something different like this will uh, cheer you all up anyway. Man, but we were in the, at that point. You know, Margaret had been a waitress for years on and off when she was young, going to 
of school and stuff. Oh, the mustache. My only experience in a kitchen type atmosphere was in military academy. I was a head waiter for one year. Other than that, we didn't know much. The U.S. Corps. The original no. owner was a little tiny Japanese lady, and she went down there with us and showed us all of the recipes, how to do everything. She would slap my hands while I'm back there breading fish mm-hmm. and shrimp and stuff. If I wasn't doing it right, Float or fast stuff. Before, she pretty much let us by the hand. We bought it in May of '97, and wow. 25 we years ago. did not open until almost July 8th or something of that nature. Because 26 years ago, we were very particular about how it looked. Outfitted it, decorated it with all kind of maritime That's things. Smart, like yeah. Brought us coral, suits the theme. Japanese floats and all kinds of cool stuff. It's a driftwood and My coral. My husband is the uh, super decorator, so we tried to make it what that, that piece of driftwood in a miniature museum. While you were waiting for your food and enjoying your your time. So, what did you find out about so far? We live on our boats okay. pretty well the full time, so we don't really get very much good food. So then, when you come into town, you always try to take advantage. Fresh, of it. yeah. And what happened was the locals came to love us, and so when the road opened and, and everybody was coming in, was saying, "Where should we eat? What should we do?" We had the locals saying, "You should go to the Swiftwater and try it." Okay, get a half and half. <laughs> What's half and half? You probably I'm both working, so no, no beer, yeah. please. <laughs> beer goes well with fish and chips, to be honest. You know, I, I never imagined myself. I mean, it never occurred to me that Where's I could be a mayor in Dave a small Dickinson. town. You know, there aren't very many secrets Let's here. Let's have a look. Let's right? go back a minute. Let me go a little, little bit back to that side. Yeah, Sorry. I've got to see that sign, I've got to pause it on that one. You probably both working, so no beer, please. Let me pause it on this sign if we can catch it this time. You know, I, I never imagined myself. I mean, it never occurred to me. Yeah, we caught this I part. Sorry. Mayor in a small town. Yep. Right. Celebrating 35 years in Whittier. I hope I'm saying that right, by the way, if any of you are in uh, Alaska. 19 roads. Something hard, masters, that's empty. 25 city managers, 23 evictions, 68 city studies. I don't know what the other one says in 24 hours. Uh, 11 in some, oh, 11 should rain in 24 hours, hell. 27 new harbors, four fishing dar- derbies, so I'd say. One recalled mare, 13 mares, Witter, Alaska. Yeah, for. You've got to read that. Find your P's and Q's, right? I have to be on my best behavior. It's not always easy. <laughs> Just kidding. So you can get to Whittier a couple ways. One, by ferry or cruise ship or boat. And then Is there enough boats or hell? through the tunnel. In the summertime, it opens it into Whittier. It's ex- the last tunnel out. It's 11 o'clock, so if you miss the tunnel, you're stuck here for the night. <laughs> we live on tunnel time, is what we call it. The tunnel opened to vehicle traffic back in 2000, so it's only been open to vehicle traffic for about 22 years. Yeah. And there's still people here that are angry that that happened. They, they don't want to be off the beaten path. The tunnel definitely creates some challenges. The fact that the railroad owns, yeah, as you can hear the train in the background, you know, the railroad owns almost big, all the property. Big freight train. Everyone lives in the two housing units, mostly in Vegas Towers. Why? There's no town in the world that I'm aware of that 90% of the people live in one building. <laughs> so, it? I mean, you know what everybody's having for dinner. You know, you're walking down the hall. It's a 14-story building. It says it's 15 floors, friend? but 13, there's no 13th floor. So, uh, that, that's probably common it's in weird. other parts of the world. Well, in Alaska, we don't have a lot of high-rises, especially in the number. outside of the yeah. area. So, it's very unique. But those who actually venture through the tunnel will discover... No, we know. I was wondering where this was. Sorry. Um, I used to watch a lot of ice rail truckers and rest. I know that's uh, based, the base, uh, for the main base of it is ice rail truckers is in uh, Anchorage, right? Is it Anchorage? Yeah. Sorry, this is Anchorage. Uh, Fairbanks, I think it is, for ice rail truckers. So, interesting. I'm not sure I'd want to live in one big building where 90% of the whole population is town live. Um... Because that's just a little bit too close to your neighbours, you know. I'm used to, like, um, this building's quiet at the minute. There's nothing much around. There's some little cottages over there, nothing up the underlay. So if you see me on my walks and rest, I'm not sure I want to be that intimate with my neighbours and that close. There are people in 
anchors that I know that uh, have been coming here for a long time, they'll just come down for dinner. And the reason is because of the fire. People called Whittier when that road Chaga. opened on June 8, 2000, the largest cul-de-sac in Alaska. People just drove down to drive through the tunnel and turn around in the triangle, which is the Don't section. Don't tomato Tower ketchup with uh, fried fish, please. Crazy, Tartar insane. sauce, lemon juice, fine. We dreamed of that we needed those customers, and they came, and the business just took off like hotcakes after that, and 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 never slowed down. Uh, half and half basket for you. What is half and half? And half shrimp and half fish with chips. So this is a is fresh halibut that process here in um, Prince That does look fresh and white. So I do this uh, daily as well in the morning for our fish and chips. We use halibut and cod. I came in here first as a customer and I'm I... I'm not being funny. Um, Unfortunately, I've never met a woman before in my life um, I've personally been with uh, that can cook properly. So I think she do, to be honest. Unfortunately, it's going to be a long way away from where I'm going to be going uh, up in North America. Long way away, but you never know, do you? I love a woman that could cook something like this, especially fish and chips, because fish and chips, I think, originates from England, I think, personally. Uh, I think it goes back a long, long way here. And obviously, Canadians is like a British territory anyway. Uh, Alaska is pretty much the same sort of thing. It's uh, gone over the border. Um, so, yeah, I think we probably do it best. But looking at what this actual uh, restaurant, cafe type thing is, with all the water running in, I don't think you probably beat the quality of these fish at the... Prawn. I'll call them prawns, but you're going to call them shrimp and lobster and everything else. You can't beat it. You're literally on the water, so you know everything you're eating has literally been out of the water. Probably a few hours from landing to actually eating it. I really like the place. Not going to get any fresher and, and, and nicer. Really friendly. And then when my boss purchased it, I was the first one to offer to come here and manage this place. Normally, in a busy day, we probably go through um, 30 pounds of cod and maybe 40 to 50 pounds of halibut. So daily, help. we need to prepare at least 100 pounds of fish. Halibut in cheap it either. It's pretty busy. Halibut. We normally open at 11 o'clock and in a nice sunny busy day, the line will be out of the door already at 10.30. We got busy <laughs> the whole day until 9 o'clock. When they come in here, they're like, we want to try the chowder. $10 for a bowl and... They end up getting bowled. What do you think makes the fish oh, What's so in prices? What's the secret? That's why it's a secret, I can't tell you. The <laughs> batter, the seasoning in the batter is important and the timing of it. It's all about timing. Okay, I'm just going to start with setting up my chowder. We make this every morning fresh. So, to make the chowder... I'm going to say something quick because I'll be over in America like in four months, I know. Um... I'm not, well, I love fish, I love cod, I like uh, pollock, stuff like that. I love my flatfish, even like plaice or uh, dover sole, which is like a more of an English fish, obviously from Dover. Um, I love my prawns or whatever you call shrimps, if you want to call them that. But when it comes to the other stuff in shells, like uh, like crab is fine, lobster's good. Yeah, I love it. Crayfish, yeah, or crawfish is two different things, but I love both. When it comes to all these things in crab, uh, sorry, crabs. <laughs> In shells, like uh, oysters, clams, cockles, uh, mussels, limpets, um, ugh, all the other stuff, and the weird stuff like the sea urchins. Sorry, but I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. I'll stick to normal we good stuff. We dice some carrots, onions, and celery. Looks and nice, that mix. We add a lot of spice spices. Mix. We also Herb. add some garlic and clumb base. I kind of mix with my hands. Best way? You and know you mix it through. And then we saute all that with a little bit of butter. After we saute this for a little bit, that we add awesome. some uh, sea clams. And stop. And in the end, uh, we just put some heavy cream with a little bit of water. Okay. We bring this to boil for an, about an hour. We add some potatoes and we put the smoked salmon in the end. We get the smoked salmon um, Prince William Sound. Getting smoked salmon into the chowder, it's not really Break typical. It to bit. Yeah. So when I tell the customers that it's a clam chowder with smoked salmon, they really like that because they never tried it before. Oh, I'm all right with salmon, tripe, all that sort of stuff. It's pretty interesting. Catfish I, um, about. I never lived in the condo before. I grew up living in the house, but 
I love the idea of having a post office on the bottom floor. <laughs> there is a little grocery store. Um, there is a gym. There is church in the basement. I wake up with amazing view, and I work in a place facing the harbor. It's an impressive view, how we are. It is pretty unique itself. Postcard picture uh, image uh, from out the back, lake and from the harbor. How do you like it so far? It's beautiful, yeah. I want to see this board up here with the prices on. I can't see it. It's a huge, huge deal. Just people telling their friends and, and bringing their relatives that came up to visit Alaska. In fact, just this summer, we got introduced to a book with a uh, fiction writer. My camera, don't rattle. And he mentions the swift water in there. I couldn't. Oh, really? <laughs> Hooray! Well, here's for the ladies. You've got to serve the women before the men. Sure. It was fabulous. It was worth Excellent. coming for. Absolutely worth coming for. It was delicious. I never ever heard anybody say there was better fish and chips in Alaska than ours. And we were very prideful about that. That made me feel it's good. It's like cayenne Every pepper or paprika on the fish. Also we dip it us to not and drop it. A thing and to Continue to do it the same way every good. time. Even though it might cost a little bit more or take a little more time, it was worth it because the people truly had that experience. And to this day, I still hear it. Oh, you guys had the best fish and chips in Alaska. I'm not going to lie. Like, a, as a British uh, guy, well, not British. I'm from England, yeah. I'm British, English, whatever you want to call me. We know all about fish and chips and we've been perfecting it for many, many hundreds of years. I'm telling you what, the job they're doing there looks damn impressive. I'd love to eat some of that. I'm getting really hungry eating that. I've just had some uh, homemade chilli, con carne, if you want to call it that, with tomatoes and bits and pieces in. A bit like what the cowboys and the rustlers in America have. Just with some little chunks of bread with a bit of butter on to dip in it. My chilli con carne. Um, I enjoyed that video. I hope you did as well. Let me just do that a minute. Um... Like I said at the start of the video, it's the first time you're checking out my channel, please uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to do as much different content as I can, copyright dependent and all the rest, you know. Got to be careful, I don't want to lose my channel, I've got to start again because this is a lot of work, you know. But it's worth it for you, you amazing people out there, whether you're in America, UK, wherever you are. Thank you all so much, seriously, for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, literally. Remember to check out the rest of my great content and playlists and everything else on Paul B. Hudson 85, this channel, of course. You'll see in a minute the little circle down below. If you tap that, you can just go up above and press subscribe, yeah? So don't forget to do that. And also, please don't forget to like. Like I just said, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you all so much. Have a great evening, morning, night, wherever you are. Thank you so much.